my god! They don't see me! They don't see me! Exciting. X Games Minneapolis 2019. Anyone else still in position to be taken down? Swan is just going for a kill here. Can he get the shots? He's at Best multiplayer game. Apex Legends. Thank you, I love you guys. It's party time. Always watching. Wow, wow, that sizzle brought back so many crazy memories. Oh my God, I'm watching that again after we're done filming this. It's been a year. That was nuts, yeah, that was so cool to see. For sure. Uh, hey everybody, I'm Jay Frechette, I'm the community manager here at Respawn. We're here with a very special dev stream celebrating the one year anniversary of Apex Legends on February 4th, which is insane. Uh, with me, Chad Grenier, Drew McCoy, our fearless leaders uh, for Apex. Uh, we got a really special show planned for you guys today. Uh, this is a little bit different than what we've done in the past and we'll return back to the Respawn studio for our normal dev streams, but we want to do something bigger this time because uh, we got a lot to talk about. Uh, we're going to look at the year that we've had with Apex and reflect on that a little bit. We're going to give you the first details for season four, uh, which is going to be really exciting. And yeah, we're just going to have a fun, what's fun episode here. It, what's it called, Jay? What is it called? You tell me. Assimilation. There it is. Your first details for season four it will be called Assimilation. We're really excited about this one. We've had some fun things planned for it. So uh, stay tuned for that. But first up, man, going through that sizzle, um, Memory that really lane, made man. me like, I'm feeling like this time last year, we were here. We were in this building we were literally like 12 months and like yeah. four days ago, I think. Filming our intro videos and stressing out about launching Apex. And actually right. mo-capped all the launch legends in this space. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. yeah. That is true. This is where <laughs> they were all born. Uh, We've got a bigger and fancier one now, but this served us very well for a few years. As, you know, speaking of like the, you know, the mocap work that was done here, um, really makes me think back of production and the legends yeah and developing the legends when we decided this was going to be a character based game and i didn't realize the depth of what that was going to mean for us um really kind of late into playtest and for me it was when it was lifeline she's the one that stands out yep lifeline was one of the moment. first characters that really came together she was the first legend that i mained a lot in early development and when her first like when the art started coming in and her voice started coming in and she would say her lines when you would ping, that's where everything kind of clicked for me of like where this was magical compared to other shooters that I had played and that our characters really had the personality and you know, so I was starting to get attached to them from a different way outside of just, I enjoy playing this character because of their gameplay. Yeah, and it's, it was tough for us because we've never made a game about characters before. Like that's, they are the backbone of Apex. Um, and so, it was frustrating, but during development, when I would go to Dusty, one of the studio heads, and be like, oh, yeah, "The game's gonna be like this. We do that," and he's like, "You're saying you're making a character game? Like, I'm not. I'm not feeling character." Yet. I'm like, "Yeah, it's all temp models and temp audio. Like, of course, there's no character coming through." But kept getting pushed, and so we were trying everything we could to imbue the game with character and trying to really understand the legends. And then to see the reaction from players, like the amount of cosplay, the fan art, the way it's touched people, and like the, the diversity of characters and the, how it can appeal to so many different types of people, to see that actually like land as well as it has has been like super important and incredible to just like witness. Yeah, agreed. Me. What about for you, Chad? What about the legends is really stand out for you in development? <clears throat> well, the challenging part is how do you how do you make a character game and tell the story of these characters in a multiplayer game? There's no campaign. Yeah. Uh, so that was a fun challenge, um, <clears throat> trying to do that. And you know, uh, we're releasing videos like the Wraith Lore video, the animated short. Um, you know, stands out as a, a really cool part of, uh, of what we've done here. So yeah, I think like as we've released content for the game, like <coughs> seeing how we tie outside game content to in-game storytelling to the CG pieces, like all of the like the way the dots connect and how it's like 
I'm excited not just for new content like playing on a new map or whatever, but you learn something about mm -hmm. the legends and have some context to them or understand legends that have a history together. Uh, the race short is still like one of our highlights, even looking at like sentiment and like the general response. And I feel like the team's just been getting better and better at as team goes yeah, we on. Got a, we got a lot more coming too. We have a lot more yeah. coming. More pitching like the crypto tees and, yeah. and uh, Canyon Lands was one of the highlights for me too because that was another one where I feel like, oh my God, I love it that we're doing this kind of stuff in the game. And also just our culture where like, you know, a great idea can come from anywhere and if people get excited about it, you know, we'll run with it. Well, and also to see like the fan reactions to stuff like that, like uh, with the holiday event and Mirage and the little voice recorder yes. and having people find that. And, you know, it's, it's not a huge amount of people that go deep on this stuff but it's super meaningful to them. And to like, it's actually like really fun to like leave little bread crumbs and like see people are picking apart and, you know, go to the Apex Lore subreddit and see all their latest crazy theories. And it's, you know, as a, as a parent, you get really excited like at Christmas as well. Cause you want to give your kids like cool presents and yeah. get them excited. And it's like, we get to do that all year long with the game. It's, it's really cool to see people dig into it. We were talking about this before we were shooting, the, the feeling of shipping a game, of hey, you, you work on something for you know years and your head's down, especially with Apex, we had to be so secretive and it was difficult because we were working on something really cool and interesting and uh, we had to wait until that very last minute to kind of going from nobody knows anything about what we're doing at all to this giant launch that we ended up having. Uh, so I think that stands out for me too, getting the people in the room and seeing the 10 million unique Dude, uh, players nice. kind of show up for the first time and us watching the counter and kind of cheering together we kind of saw in the sizzle video uh it was a, it was a really validating time i think because we were all excited and we were confident in the game but very really unsure about what we were doing normally too. in every game i've worked on there's you know trailers and and videos that come out ahead of time and you kind of can gauge the, the the reaction of, right. the, of the of the fans and so this was super nerve-wracking like working in total secret up until the launch day and you're just going you know we've put our you know whole life into this the last three or four years and what if no one cares <laughs> yeah especially when it was kind of like a game uh no one expected to make when we started the project and players weren't expecting so when i took over the project and i was put in charge of it i was like ah well let's hope this works it was really it was like like chad said it was incredibly nerve-wracking and it's kind of hard if you've never uh, been a part of shipping or unveiling a game but you're so close to it, you literally can't tell if it's any good anymore. It's true. Like you, you take outside uh, feedback and you hear what people are saying, you play test it a lot, but you never know. Like the, the audience is gonna be so fickle most of the time. And so it was like, you know, I was sitting there, you know, biting my nails, like, don't talk to me. I'm just gonna watch the stream, watch chat, see what people say. And that first day was just incredible. And then followed by a, oh no, what did we create? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it went from exciting to scary, like yeah. really quick. Yeah, in back in March, I'm sure a bunch of players, especially Reddit, will remember how underwhelming season one was. Like we, we weren't happy with what we did. Um, we were up against it, like chat said, like, oh crap, what do we do? Yeah. Um, and I remember being really down. It was like, crap, we, we can't, we're not good at this. Like players are angry, blah, blah, blah. And I went into play test or one of our 5 p.m. play tests and it was of what it became season three. So we're playing on World's Edge. Uh, we were playing with Crypto and Watson, new weapons, like a bunch of the new stuff that was long lead time things. And I was like, oh, wait, this is where we're getting to? Like, this is only six to eight months away? Like, okay, we're gonna be fine. Like season three for me, or like way before it shipped was the, the marker in the line, the line of sand of like, okay, we can do this. Like, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna make it. So season three was actually that point for me as well. Definitely. We're in that point again, where we're doing the 5 p.m. playtesting, going, oh man, this stuff's only yeah. a few months away. <laughs> yep. uh, that's really exciting, and uh, I'm excited for what we have coming forward, definitely in season four, both with the storytelling that we're going to be doing, uh, with the, you know, the legend that we're introducing. There's some really, really fun stuff, which uh, we're gonna give you uh, some of the first details on, so I'll just go ahead and kick things off a little bit for it. Season four assimilation is going to be launching on February 4th. The one year anniversary of Apex Legends will be the launch of season four. Uh, we're gonna talk about some of the details in the next segment, but uh, just right off the bat, we, we wanted to sort of recognize and celebrate the folks who have been with us uh, on this journey and also, you know, kind of take a look at like, here we are one year in. So what's a one year anniversary? That's some rewards for our players. 
Uh, so we will have some login rewards that'll come out with season four. And so the way it'll break down is uh, we'll have a gun charm. Uh, that's a paper crane. That's a really cool. The gun charms have been amazing. Shout out to our amazing artists and everyone who's been making those, like seeing the slate of things that are coming are great. Uh, there will be three badges, one of which you will earn, depending on kind of like where you came in uh, for the game. Uh, and there will be an XP boost uh, for you as well. So that's kind of the first tease for it. But yeah, coming up in our next segment, we will give you some of the first details for season four. So stay tuned. All right, and we're back with our next segment where, like we were saying before, I'm going to give you some of the first details of Season 4, a simulation launching on February 4th. To help me with that, I've got Jason McCord and Tom Cassiello, our writer, our designer, just the people I need to talk about some of the exciting stuff we have coming. Uh, I think first off, right, it's not a new season of Apex Legends without a new legend. So I will go ahead and announce for you folks our next legend coming in Season 4 is Forge. Take a look at that handsome guy. Call him Jimmy. He's a great guy. <laughs> Super excited about him. I know you guys have a lot of fun like with writing him. Uh, Tom, tell us a little bit about Forge. Yeah, no, he's a, uh, this guy's the exact opposite of Crypto, who's our last legend we introduced. This <laughs> yes. guy is, uh, he's, a, he's a brawler. He's, he's, he gets up close and personal with you, and he's got a mean left hook, and you can see it from the picture. Yes. Uh, he's, uh, he's a five-time right. Hyper Fighting Federation champion. Uh, yeah, well, that's a mouthful. A, okay. Yeah, that's yep. That's that's funny because you have a little experience with that. I of. do. I, I might have a, a past with a that's certain true. sports entertainment company. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I got talked about on time. That. Yeah. I got to pull on that, which is great. When we were writing this character, it was really cool. That's awesome. That's awesome. So uh, you know, outside of that, what's a little bit more kind of about his like personality and kind of like his motivation he's for coming into big the personality. Arena. And he's already he's conquered one world with the uh, with the MMA world, and now he wants to uh, conquer another one with uh, the Apex games. He's also uh, the first legend we're introducing who is corporate sponsored. Uh, yes. That's right. Yes. Uh, and his sponsor is Hammond Robotics. Now, I don't know if Apex Legends people know that, but uh, if you're a Titanfall fan, you've oh, you heard do. that love before. It. Yes. Uh, but yeah, are they, are they good? Are they bad? Are they... I'll have to play to find out. <laughs> I know even within the map, we're starting to play with that as well, leading up to season four, the players should keep an eye out for. Yeah, we'll have big map changes coming to World's Edge. Um, and um, you know, similar to the way we did King's Canyon update in season two, where we changed a big portion of the map, we'll do something like that for uh, for World's Edge. Um, Hammond might have something to do with it. Mm -hmm. So, you guys, are gonna have to wait for that for one. That. We always have amazing trailers coming out for it. We have lots more details leading up to the launch. We don't want to spoil everything just yet that uh, we have in store for it. But yeah, expect a cool map change. We're not done with World's Edge yet, uh, which is really exciting. But that's not it. What else? So we've also got, uh, you know, over on the design side. Um, well, first let's talk about something I'm really excited about that we're adding. And that's our new weapon. Yes. The Sentinel. Sentinel. So um, break this down for me, McCord. Sentinel is a new sniper rifle. It's a bolt action sniper rifle. Um, so it feels really powerful. It's got that cool, you know, animation when you yes. cock it back. Um, and um, it's a little different than our other sniper rifles because it has a charge mechanic. Yes. So. Um, don't want to go too deep on that right now, but it does um, give you a little more decision making to do whenever you're taking those shots. Do you really want to try and take the most powerful shot you can take right now? Or, um, you know, th there's some good gameplay there that we're, we're having a lot of fun with. Yeah, I've enjoyed playing a lot as well, and it does have that, that neat twist of almost like there's a, another kind of fire mode to mm -hmm. it almost that's there, which is, is really interesting that uh, we'll have, uh, you'll definitely be seeing in our trailers and our breakdowns kind of uh, moving forward as well. And also, we're making some pretty awesome uh, changes to Ranked uh, coming in for Season 3 uh, that we've been talking about on the web. And next up, I'm going to have Chin, one of our designers, who's going to walk us through what to expect in Ranked for Season 4. Okay, we have talked about kind of the past of Apex and uh, looking at the present uh, with Chad and Drew. We've looked at the future with McCord and Tom of what we have coming for Season 4 simulation. Uh, but that's not all for Season 4. We've got some brand new rank stuff happening. And with me, I've got Chin, our man behind the ranked <laughs> that we have in Apex. Uh, our guy who's out there talking to our players uh, about it. been really active on uh, social media, on our Reddit. We appreciate you for that, oh, Chin. Uh, uh, being our face for, for ranked mode. And uh, we have a blog that's uh, live for folks to go check out on playpox.com. Um, and you got some new things coming for Series 3 uh, and ranked uh, that's going to uh, launch with Season 4. Some, some new stuff, some stuff staying mm -hmm. the same. So uh, what's some of the new things, that new changes you've made this time around? So for uh, today, I think I just want to focus on two big things that we're changing for the upcoming series of Ranked. Uh, the first one is going to be what we call Master Tier. Mm. Uh, so we're introducing a new tier. Basically, think of the existing Apex Predator tier right now. We're going to rename that to 
master tier. So essentially, you know, if you get more than 10,000 RP, boom, you're into master tier. Gotcha. So, of course, the next question to ask is, so what are you doing with Apex Predator then? Um, Apex Predator Season 4, Series 3, is going to be limited to the top 500 players per platform. Okay. Uh, so remember the last series we had like the leaderboard change where basically you get to see on your Predator batch what number you are? Yes. You will, predators will only be limited to the top 500 people on that ladder. Um, you will bounce out of Predator if somebody else gets more RP than you. So predators, you need to maintain your status. Because you can be demoted you down can be to, demoted down to the, master. the master tier. Yep. However, you can't drop below master tier yep. once Correct. you've gotten up there as well. Correct. Yes. Oh man, there's going to be a lot of bouncing back and forth to make sure you're in that top 500. The, the hope is that it gives the players like the little extra incentive, the little extra kick to be like, man, I got to maintain my position on the, on the Apex Predator ladder. So. And I think the, the pressure for that holding that position is going to be a little tighter this time around because we're structuring uh, the way Ranked is rolling out for this season Correct. as well. Yeah, so what's going on with that? So that brings me on to uh, major point number two, which I wanted to talk about. Uh, we are introducing Ranked Splits. Mm. So uh, last series, uh, it ran for the entire length of the Battle Pass season. Yes. This time around, we are having two splits for one Battle Pass season. So uh, basically think of it just like, you know, like two halves of a game, really. Um, in between the half, uh, between splits, you will have your rank reset like normal. So for example, uh, if you're a Predator in split one, going into split two, you'd be reset down to plat two. Um, so there is one more other exciting thing about this though, which is uh, the splits will be played on different maps. Woo! So the first split will be played on uh, Voltage, but the second split will see the reintroduction of uh, King's Canyon. Yes, I know players are going to be really excited about that. We're excited too to get King's Canyon uh, back, in, back into the game uh, as well. Uh, so basically what players can expect uh, coming into Season 4, soft reset at the beginning, just yep. like they have for all the other seasons. Uh, you will play ranked with a new tier uh, on World's Edge uh, during a split that will last basically around half of the season. Correct. And that split will end. There will be another soft reset mm -hmm. that will happen to all players. Ranked will split two will begin. Yep. And that will be on Kings Canyon this time. Yep. And you will run through till the end of the season for Correct. that as well. That's pretty exciting. Uh, so there's one more extra detail I wanted to mention. So uh, the rewards for the uh, ranked series is dependent on the highest tier you've achieved on either of the splits. So for example, if you uh, achieved Apex Predator on the first split and you achieved Diamond on the second split, you will get the Apex Predator rewards. Uh, the other thing, though, is that if you have the same rank in both splits, uh, we'll give you a little something extra. We'll give you an animated version of your rank badge. Oh. Otherwise, it'll just be the static version of the cool. higher tier that you achieve. Cool. And as far as the scoring itself, that's staying the same? That's unchanged. We made some small tweaks, like we're increasing the assist time from 5 to 7.5 seconds. Um, and some characters now have abilities that don't necessarily damage, but still give um, assist credit. But for the most part, it's the same. That's really exciting. That's very, very cool. I think that addresses a lot of player feedback that we've had, both internal players that we've brought in to yep. come let us know how they feel about ranked and uh, stuff we've heard from other players. So I think, you know, between splits, King's Canyon coming back, that's <laughs> amazing. Uh, and I think putting those high stakes in Apex Predator now, where it's like you, once you get there, you're not guaranteed the spot. Correct. You gotta, you gotta make sure you keep earning it because someone's gonna be coming for it. That's, yep. pretty, that's pretty cool, Chen. Nice job, buddy. Thank you. You really did well this time. <laughs> Uh, that's really exciting. Well, in addition to kind of feeding into ranked is kind of competitive play, which mm -hmm. is a big part uh, of our game uh, as well. And, you know, in this last December, if you've been following us, uh, we officially announced the Apex Legends Global Series, uh, which is really exciting. And so I've got a few more things that we're going to kind of recap uh, and then kind of let you know what to expect uh, coming up very soon and also uh, in the first parts of uh, this year. I'm going to use a little cheat sheet here because we've got a, a ton of stuff that's happening. And so just to kind of recap, uh, you know, what the Apex Legends Global Series is going to be about you know this is a competitive ecosystem that's going to feature 12 live global events uh, that we're going to have players uh, representing over 60 countries uh, which is going to be awesome I love mm -hmm. seeing like you know you never know where the best players are going to yeah. come from so it's really exciting it out so in addition to that these guys are going to be battling out uh, over the course of the series for three million dollars in cash prizes so the stakes are are there for that one too that's definitely a lot of money and uh, we're going to be kind of kicking things off with our first online qualifier and that's going down this weekend on January 25th through the 27th and then coming up next uh, uh, the next online qualifier we'll be having on February 29th through March 2nd. And then all of this, what we're doing is leading into that Apex Legends Global Series Major. And that's going to be in Arlington, Texas on March 13th through the 15th. And then uh, today, the CGD, our wonderful competitive guys, uh, they allowed me here to reveal some of the locations for our first two Apex Legends uh, Global Series premiere events. So I get to be the fortunate person uh, to relay that. So. Our first premier event is going to take place April 24th through 26th in Paris. Paris. In Paris. 
Uh, I'm open for any rosters looking for a squad <laughs> mate for that one. Uh, that would be awesome. And then our second one happening on May 30th and, uh, through the 31st in Bucharest, mm. uh, which is really exciting as well. So great to see that kind of global presence yeah. uh, for the game. Uh, there's going to be a lot more to talk about uh, with competitive play over 2020. So make sure to follow all of our channels and you can get the details of our announcement uh, and the series. Head over to playapex.com. So it's really, really exciting, exciting stuff. Well, Chin, thank you so much for coming thank to you. talk about it. Right? I know you're very busy and you've got a million more things to do before we... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're already looking at me like, yes, Jay, yeah. are we done? Are we done? Like, cool. Thanks for watching. Thank you. All right, that's basically our stream uh, to give you guys some of the first details of Season 4 and looking back on the year. So a reminder, Season 4 Simulation drops on February 4th. Make sure to check playapex.com and follow us on Twitter uh, for all the details, patch notes, and cool stuff that we have rolling out, including the website is live today with the first details of Season 4 we talked about. Uh, Chin had to go because he's got a bunch of Season 4 stuff to finish for rank, so he had to head back to work, but from all of us... Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, thank you for all of your support. We can't wait to show you what we got coming in 2020. Have a good one. See ya. Bye.